Welcome back to today's Midday Fix, protecting young injuries, uh, young athletes from uh, overuse injuries. Dr. Nikhil Verma and is a sports medicine specialist at uh, Midwest Orthopedics at Rush. And uh, he is joined by Kristen Stojic, the girls' varsity softball coach at Nazareth Academy. Hi, right, thanks for coming in, guys. Thanks for having us. A lot of activity back here. We, we are seeing a, a big increase in injuries with female softball pitchers, are we? We are. Why is that? Well, I think there's two things. Number one is there's been a common misconception that somehow the windmill pitch is markedly safer than the overhand throwing mechanism in terms of elbow and shoulder injuries. Uh, and as such, people think that these girls can throw as much as they want without repercussion. So we see girls throwing more than one game uh, per day, uh, multiple games in, in a weekend uh, outing, and throwing a number of pitches uh, throughout that outing without right. restriction. Coach Stoddard, that, that windmill pitch is now the, pretty much the standard pitch. It in is. Girls softball, it is. Right? We must do a full rotation in high school softball. And and it used to be yes. a simple, uh, what do you call it? Just, Just a slingshot, that slingshot back. Slingshot type that, pitch. That's several years now. It's been. Did the a windmill, windmill pitch uh, change it, the injury profile? Is that what we're seeing more of because of that? I, I think it just um, boils down to the amount of use. So the pitchers are just being used a lot more than they used to be. Mm -hmm. And as Dr. Verma said, they pitch, you know, sometimes two, three games a day in a tournament. Right. And, Doctor, you've published a study uh, of, of girls pitching with that windmill pitch. What'd you find out? Well, we did. What we noticed is that most of these girls tend to have pain in the front of their shoulder, or the anterior aspect of the shoulder. And we were curious as to why that happened. And we thought that one of the problems may be the tendon in the front of the shoulder called the biceps. And so we looked at the activity of the biceps in an overhand mechanism compared to an underhand mechanism. We found that there's a lot more load on the biceps in a windmill pitch, and that explains some of the uh, symptoms that they're having. Oh, okay, a 20% increase is what there you found is, out. Yeah, market increase. Right. So so what you've uh, come up with, I, I, we, we know that boys in boys baseball, they've, they've got restrictions on the number of pitches you can throw in a day and with workouts. So you've come up with a similar idea for... Uh, for, for women uh, softball? Players. We do. I think there's two things that we need to look at. Number one, it's the volume of throwing that they're doing, and then there are some other simple exercises that we can try to do to help improve or reduce the risk of injury. Walk so, over and show us some of these, if you will. Some of the things that we like to do is, I think we've all Another heard thanks of Thanks to our volunteers. For being here. <laughs> <laughs> we've all heard of the rotator cuff, and clearly the rotator cuff is an important part of any throwing mechanism. And uh, these guys here are just doing some simple rotator cuff strengthening activity. So one of them's working on external rotation in the front, uh, and then if we turn them around, they can work on internal rotation. So they're basically strengthening the rotator cuff in the shoulder. Okay. The second thing we know is that uh, anytime you do an activity repetitively, the shoulder gets tends to get tight. Let me just have you rotate around here. So they start to lose range of motion throughout the season. So one of the important things is making sure they're stretched out both before a game as well as after a game and making sure that we're not seeing a progressive loss of range of motion as the season goes by. Okay. And then the last thing is we have uh, one of our players over here just doing some simple exercises to try to strengthen their shoulder blade. So people think about the shoulder as the ball and socket joint, but really the shoulder blade is critical for providing a stable base for the shoulder to act. So we all like to get into this hunched down position, and if we can make sure that our shoulder blades get back and stable, that helps us to, to uh, decrease the load on the shoulder itself. Okay, so you're limiting uh, pitchers down to a certain count, pitch count, just like in, in Little League Baseball, right? Well, we're yeah. trying to come up with what we think are some safe recommendations, and probably 150. 20 pitches per game with a 24-hour rest period between outings seems to be a reasonable uh, guesstimate. But really what we need to do is to have some of these associations do some studies to figure out what's safe and what's not. Sure. Coach Stojic, you, 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 I know you're looking for ways to keep from putting the responsibility on players themselves, right? Well, we ask our players to be honest with us. You know, if they're hurting at all, we'll shut them down. We don't want them to further injure themselves. But we do encourage thorough stretching before and after okay. practice as well as icing. So, you, you, in addition to that, you want to, uh, with, with regard to workouts, you want a, a certain rest rest time in between workouts. We do. We don't. Um, we have days where we don't throw at all to mm -hmm. uh, give the arm a rest. So that's an average of one to two days a week. And then our pitchers don't throw every day. Good. So uh, hopefully we're taking it easy on them as well. Well, I learned a few facts. <laughs> one is I had no idea that these girls could throw under these windmill pitches at 75 miles an hour. That astounded me. I mean, that's well, that's some just can. amazing. <laughs> yeah. Some of them, yeah. Well, you know what? Uh, I, you know, the other thing I learned is there's nothing soft about softball. Nothing. I want nothing. to thank you both for coming in, Dr. Verma and uh, Kristen Stojic. Uh, appreciate it. If you missed anything, you can watch this segment again by logging on to WGNTV.com slash midday, helping keep the girls injury-free. We'll be right back. Thank you.